Good morning to all. Welcome to DTA Studio. Uh, now, I will brief about what happened in the previous class. Basically, this 8051 microcontroller, it supports serial data communication. Means, the transmission of the data and the reception of the data is placed serially, not parallelly. Serial means bit by bit. In addition with that, in the previous class we discussed, for this serial data communication, two registers in 8051, they will support. The first one is called as the ESCON register. First one is called as the ESCON register. And the another one is called as the ESBOP register. In the earlier class, we discussed what exactly this ESCON. ESCON means serial control register. And what is the bit structure? And what is the function of each and every bit? In this class, we move to the, the second register, which helps for the serial data communication in 8051 microcontroller, that is the ESBOP register. ESBOP register. The full form of the ESBOP register is serial buffer register. Please remember, buffer is nothing but the temporary storage or temporary memory. Similar to the SCAR register, this ESBOP register is also an 8-bit register. It's an 8-bit register. The bit structure starts from D0, ending with D7. Similar to the SCAN register, the SBUF register is also an 8-bit register. Then what is the function of, what is the main function of this SBUF register is, this register is used to hold the data. In the other sense, it is used to store the data for the serial communication. For the communication data is needed. So that this SCAN register, it will control the transmission and reception. But which register stores the data or holds the data? This SBUF register, it holds the data before the transmission and after the reception. So that's why SBUF register is used to hold data for serial communication. Not only to hold the data, it is also helps to transmit the same data and also to receive the same data in the other side. In the source side, it helps to transmit the what the data it is stored earlier. And also at the receiver side, it helps to receive the same data. And this 8-bit register, that is SBUF register, is again divided into two types. One is called as the write-only register, another one is called as the read-only register. One is called as the write-only register, another one is called as the read-only register. Now come to the what exactly write-only register and read-only register. Here, as the name itself indicates, just imagine 8051 microcontroller kit is there or board is there. From the 8051 microcontroller to the other devices, we can transmit the data, some data. For example, during interfacing from 8051 microcontroller, you would send the data to the stepper motor, DC motor, or traffic light controller, like this. Okay. Whatever the data sent out from the microcontroller, the data is stored in the write only register. That means this register is used to hold data to be transmitted, goes out. Transmitted means goes out from 8051 microcontroller via a pin called as TXT pin. TXT is nothing but what? Transmission pin. Okay. In 8051 microcontroller pin diagram, the pin number 3.1, that means port 3.1. This pin is used for the, to transmit the data out of the microcontroller to the other devices, okay? So that this write-only register, it is used to hold the data which is transmitted out of the 8051 microcontroller via means through the pin TXD. Similarly, the read-only register, it will perform the opposite function of the write-only. Means after transmission, what is the next function? It's a reception, receiving of the data. So at the another time, whatever the data we have transmitted, it is received that data, received data, is stored in the read-only register. Means, this register is used to hold the data received from the external sources. Means, in the beginning I told you that from the microcontroller, whatever the data is goes out. It is stored in the write-only register. So similarly, in the another side, if the microcontroller gets the data, from the external resources. If it is get the data from the stepper motor or it may be from the DC motor, whatever the data uh, the microcontroller kit can get from the other devices, that data is stored in the read-only register. 
the data is available or it comes to the microcontroller via pin that is called as the RXT pin that is called a receiver pin and in the 8051 pin diagram the pin 3.0 means port number 3 where the first pin is there no that is called as the P3.0 so in the write only register the data is goes out from the microcontroller to the other devices the data is stored but in a read only register in the opposite side the data comes from the external devices to the microcontroller that's why it is used to hold the data received from the external source so sectional sources means it may be a DC motor, stepper motor. The data is received from the external sources via this pin number that is called as the RXT pin or receive pin, receive pin that is the pin 3.0. That is about the SBUF resistor. There is no detailed structure for the SBUF resistor. Okay, there is only a, a types of the SBUF resistor and what exactly it will perform. Now we are moving on to the baud rate. Based on this baud rate, some problems are there in the microcontroller according to syllabus. So what exactly is the baud rate? So in uh, communication, there are two common words. One is called as the baud rate, another one is called as the bit rate. There is a, a difference between the baud rate and the bit rate. For example, baud rate is nothing but it is defined as the, the number of symbols transmitted per second, per second, not per minute, not per hour. Okay, number of symbols. Here, symbols are nothing but there is another meaning for the symbol that is also called as the character, character. Symbol is also called as character. For example, A is the symbol or character. Similarly, B is the symbol or character. And the group of character, hello, is the group of characters or symbols. How much number of symbols transmitted per second? That is called as the baud rate. Bit rate means how much bits are transmitted. For example, 0 is the one bit, 1 is the another bit. Like that, how much number of bits, binary bits are transmitted per second? That is called as the bit rate. But baud rate means how much number of symbols. Please remember a symbol or a character is a group of more than one bit. A symbol or a character is a group of more than one bit. That's why here the second points indicate that each symbol may consist of more than one bit of information. A means the A is converted as a minimum two bit information, maximum eight bit information like that. Okay, it should not be one bit because if it is become one bit then it is called as the bit rate. Now we are discussing baud rate. That's why whatever the symbol or character is there, no, each and every character or symbol is converted into a more than one bit. It may be a two bit, three bit, four bit, like that, up to maximum of eight bit. Because 8051 is the eight bit microcontroller, not more than the eight bit. Each and every character what convert. And here there is a relationship between the bit rate and the baud rate that is given by the equation. That means bit rate and baud rate are related as given by the equation. Bit rate is equal to, please remember, bit means zeros and ones. Baud means it's a symbol. Okay, bit, bit rate is equal to baud rate into number of bits in each symbol. Baud rate into number of bits in each symbol. Okay, I already told you, A may be converted into a, a two bits or three bits up to maximum eight bits. So how much bits you are converted? So that is number of bits in each symbol. This gives the relationship between the bit rate and the baud rate. So now here, there is a formula, standard formula to calculate the baud rate. Baud rate is given by the equation, crystal frequency divided by 12 into 32 into 1 divided by 256 minus TH1. Please remember, crystal frequency is nothing but a 0.51 microcontroller having a standard crystal frequency because in 8051 microcontroller, the crystal frequency is used to generate the clock pulses. There is an inbuilt clock pulses because when 8051, when, uh, when there is a timer, it, there is an inbuilt crystal, it produces the clock pulses. When it acts as a counter, we should provide the clock pulses externally. In the previous class, I told you. So that the crystal frequency is around 11.0592 megahertz. This is the almost, sometimes we are called as 12 megahertz. So this is the standard crystal frequency in 8051 microcontroller that is 11.0592 mega, 10 to the power of 6 hertz. Divided by 12 into 32, here 32 indicates in 8051 microcontroller there are 30, 32 input output pins are there. There are 32 input output pins are there. Okay, into 1 divided by 256 minus TH1. 
256 indicates the, the maximum address level. TH1 is nothing but is the timer. Okay, because the timer is divided into TH TH0, similarly TH1. At the same time, TL0, TL1. Okay, in the previous class, I told you it's because 8051 supports to the 16 bit timer as well as 16 bit counter. That 16 bit timer is again divided into 8 bit, 8 bit. So one is called as the TH1, another one is called as the TH0, similarly TL0 and TL1. Like this. Okay, and here TH1 is the very important one where we are storing the baud rate. TH1 is indicated, it's a timer 1 in mode 2. TH1 indicates the, it's a timer 1, timer 1, timer 1 in mode 2, in mode 2. You, 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 know, you already knew that, what is mode 1, mode 2, all those things in the previous classes. Here TH1 is the timer 1 in mode 2. So that the baud rate is given by the equation crystal frequency in majority of the problems, they in the problem itself, they mentioned what is the crystal frequency. That is 11.0592 megahertz divided by 12 into 32 into 1 divided by 256 minus TH1. This is the standard formula or ready formula for the uh, calculation of baud rate. So here, how do you calculate the TH1? In this formula, there is a TH1. To calculate the TH1, in the problem, if they are not given the TH1, then there is a formula to calculate the TH1. TH1 is equal to 256 minus crystal frequency divided by 12 into 32 into baud rate. Okay, if you know the baud rate, then you can easily calculate the TH1. If you know the TH1, you can easily calculate the baud rate. They are interrelated. Okay, but in the problem, they may give either baud rate or TH1 value. Okay, if any one value, if they are given, then it is very easy to calculate the remaining parameters. Okay, if they are given TH1, then the standard value is there for the crystal frequency, then you can easily calculate the baud rate. If they give baud rate, so you, if you want TH1, this parameter, then you should use this formula, 256 minus crystal frequency divided by 12 into 32 into baud rate, then it is very easy. Okay, so here, see here, in the problem, okay, you should write an ALP, that is the assembly language program. In the assembly language program, you there is no provision to directly move to a resistor or to the accumulator, this is decibel values, decimal values. Commonly, there are four baud rates are there. Four baud rates are used in the 8051 microcontroller. The commonly or widely used baud rate is 9600. All of you already uh, done in the interfacing experiments while selecting the baud rate. Majority of people, you selected 9600 baud rate, sometimes 4800, half of this here, half of this 9600. 2400, half of the 4800, and 1200, half of the 2400. If you remember this one, then uh, it degrade into a half of 50% of this one, you can get the remaining bar rates. But it is not, there is no any provision to directly push this decimal value, that's a decimal value, to any resistor or to the any accumulator while writing the assembly language program. That's why there is an alternate hexadecimal value for each and very decimal. In front of this one, your normal rate H, H is nothing but what? Hexadecimal. For 4800, that is the FEA. And 2400, that is the F4. And 1200, that is the EA. Better to remember these four. Uh, otherwise, you should calculate first how they convert into a FD, if they convert into hexadecimal, then only you can write the assembly language program. So, better to remember these baud rates and what is the hexadecimal alternate value for each decimal value. 9600 is the FD. 4800 is the FEA, 2400 is the F4, and 1200 is the E8. These are the four baud rates we are commonly used while interfacing, while transmitting the serial data from microcontroller to the other devices, that is the external devices. Okay. Now, this is the uh, last topic in the 8051 microcontroller, that is the working of serial port. I already told you 8051 supports only serial data communication. For serial data communication, we require a serial port. Okay, there are different ports are there, serial port, parallel port, USB port like that. But here, serial port required for serial data communication, how it will work in 8051 microcontroller? You might have uh, observed in the kit, 8051 microcontroller kit or board, there is a serial port is there. So how it will work? See here, the clock for the serial port means for the serial data transmission, we require a board rate. For serial data transmission and reception, we require a baud rate. 
For this board rate, we require a clock. For this board rate, we require a clock. So that how to produce the clock by using timer one working in mode two. That mode is called as the eight bit auto reload. In the earlier class, I told you, okay, when the timer one, timer one means th one. Th one is called as the timer one. Th zero is called as the timer zero. Okay, when it is working in mode two, it acts as the eight bit auto reload. So that's why what the first point is now we are indicating that the clock for the serial port, the clock for the serial port to generate the required bar rate, to generate the required bar rate like 9600, 4800, 1200, 2400, any one bar rate to generate the bar rate for serial data transmission and reception is provided by which one will provide this clock pulses and bar rate this timer one especially when it is working in the mode two. Timer one should not should not working in the mode zero. It should working in the what mode two. Mode two is nothing but what eight bit auto reload. There are two modes are there. Mode one and mode two generally. Mode zero you are not, not used uh, commonly. Mode one and mode two. So here the timer one should work in the mode two. Then it will helps to generate the required baud rate. When the baud rate is generated, that baud rate is stored in the TH one. Okay, TH one. That act as the clock for the serial port. That act as the clock for the serial port. When everything is happened, that is the baud rate is generated, clock pulses are generated, then the serial transmission and reception automatically what's called happens. So after this one, the SCAN register is loaded with the required serial mode. The SCAN register. SCAN register is the serial control register. I told you in the previous class. So this SCAN helps. There are four serial modes. Zero zero is called as the serial mode zero. Zero one is called as the serial mode one with the eight bit data, one start bit and one stop bit. And one zero serial mode two and one one that is serial mode three. We are start from zero, ending with three. But among these four serial modes, the eight zero five one microcontroller commonly prefers or we are widely used this zero one. Zero one is nothing but which mode? It is a serial mode, serial mode one. That is the second mode. Serial mode zero, it is not widely used. Serial mode one is widely used because it consists of a start bit, one start bit, especially at the left hand side, there is a start bit, and another side, there is a stop bit. Okay, in between start bit and stop bit, there is a eight bit original data is there. Totally, it becomes 10 bits. See here, here, there are eight bits of data at the center. Consider this is the data is starting from D0, ending with the D7. At the left hand side, there is a start bit, it is one bit. And at the right hand side, there is a stop bit, then it is also one bit. Start bit, left hand side, stop bit, right hand side. So these are the two bits plus eight bit in the middle, that is called as the data frame of data bits. This is the original data. So totally it becomes what? 10 bits in the serial mode one. Microcontroller always prefers serial mode one. Okay. And to serially transmit the data, the data is written to the SBUF register. Okay. SBUF register means here I have been told it's an 8-bit register. What is the 8-bit data is there? This we should write this data into a SBUF register. SBUF register. SBUF, it will force the data before the transmission. And after the transmission at the receiver side, it receives the data. Again, it will show the or hold the data. Okay. So first thing is the SCAN register is loaded into the required serial mode. There are four modes are there, but what we are required? Serial mode one. It is widely preferred. Please remember in the serial mode one, it consists of the one start bit, one stop bit, and eight bits of data. This eight bits of data is stored in which register? That is the second register, that is the SBUF register, serial buffer register, temporarily uh, till transmission. Once the transmission is over, the data is become zero in SBUF register. This is the third step. Then what happens after storing the data in the SBUF register? As soon as the data is moved to the SBUF register, original data, when it is 8-bit data is moved to the SBUF register, then it is framed with the start bit and stop bit. I told you now. Okay. As soon as the data is stored in the SBUF register, 8-bit data is stored in the SBUF register, in the, in the left hand side, start bit is attached and in the right hand side, stop bit is attached. That is called as it is framed with start bit and stop bits. It is both are 1-1 bit. Start bit and stop bits. 
after data is framed now the data frame is transmitted one bit at a time and the xdp one bit at a time is serially okay if all the bits are transmitted then it is called as the parallel but 80 by 1 microcontroller not supports for the parallel data communication that's why after the data is framed with the start bit stop bit and the middle eight bits of the data now the data frame that means the data bits are transmitted bit by bit or serially in which means on txt pin txt pin is nothing but what it's a transmission pin so after all the bits are transmitted what happens see here once the serial transmission is complete after all the bits are transmitted stop bit is also start bit it will initiate begin it will start in the means it will transmitted first followed by the eight bits of data finally stop bit is transmitted once the transmission is complete then the ti flag ta flag please remember in the escort register the second bit is called as the ta flag first bit is called as the ri flag receive interrupt similarly second bit is called as the ta flag that is transmit interrupt once the serial transmission is completed over all the bits are transmitted then the ta flag is raised to 1 or is set to 1 it indicates that all the bits are successfully transmitted to the receiver side now it is ready to take the next data now it is ready to take the next data when when ti is raised to 1 till the transmission is over ti is equal to 0 once the transmission is over all the data bits are transmitted to the receiver side then ti is automatically raised to 1 1 that indicates that see here it's indicating that the user can write the next data into the s box means transmission is over now the user can write or can store the next data wanted to transmit into the what s box register that is what indication okay the in this way the serial code work in 8051 microcontroller now how the serial data transmission takes place next slide we move on to how the serial reception takes place till now the we discuss about how the serial port work in the serial port two operations takes place one is the serial data transmission another one is the serial data reception how the serial data transmission takes place here we will discuss step by step the following steps are used to program the 8051 for serial data transmission okay the first step is called as the tmart register is loaded with the value 20h see here earlier okay the first register tmart register tcom register escort register sbuf register we require the, the basic data okay for, for discussing these steps the tmart register is also 8 bit register no okay the tmart register is loaded with the value 20h 20h is nothing but in the bit structure every bits are converted into hexadecimal it become 20h that indicates so now it is in timer 1 and acting in mode 2 okay when tmart is loaded with the in the program Uh, in the next slide we will discuss the program how to load the tmart register with 20h as soon as you are storing the tmart register with 20h of data 20h of data it automatically act as what timer 1 timer 1 in mode 2 mode 2 is nothing but 8 bit auto reload mode 2 mode 1 means 16 bit timer but mode 2 means what 8 bit auto reload okay i told you why it is called as auto reload one time loading takes place still original values there in the th1 second time also loading takes place that is called as a reloading that's why it's called as 8 bit auto reload in the second class so here as soon as you are storing 20h it indicate that now it is acting in a timer 1 and mode 2 that is auto reload okay to set the baud rate here we should fix the baud rate now after loading 21h next step is the th1 is loaded with the 8 bit appropriate value of the baud rate for serial data transfer before transfer the data serially so for the th1 we should move the appropriate baud rate appropriate means there are four baud rates are there i told you 9600 4800 2400 and 1200 which are the baud rate you want we can what's called load that baud rate appropriate which one you want we can load that appropriate value to the th1 th1 is a 8 bit register 16 bit timer is divided into 8 bit timer plus 8 bit timer or 8 bit register plus 8 bit register in th1 is the high bit register you should fill here th0 is a low bit register okay 
so that in the th1 you should load the 8 bit appropriate value of the baud rate for serial data transfers you can load any among four baud rates okay they are automatically converted into 8 bits of the because it's a what uh, this th1 is basically it's a 8 bit register okay so that every baud rate is converted into 8 bit then we should load that 8 bit baud rate into a th1 fine then next step is the SCAN register is loaded with previous class I told you SCAN register is loaded with 50H. Why 50H only? Because in the 8051 microcontroller, the mode one, serial mode one, serial mode one, second mode, okay, it is widely used. 99% of the communication in the 8051 microcontroller prefer serial mode one. In the serial mode one, if you convert all the eight bits, so we can get the hexadecimal number 50H. Okay, better to see the previous slides where if you convert all the 15, uh, sorry, all the 8 bits into hexadecimal, you can get the 50H. 50H. That means hexadecimal value 50H. If you have load this 50H into a SCAN register, then it automatically work, automatically act in serial mode 1. Serial mode 1. Okay, so that TH1 should be loaded into the baud rate. SCAN you should always load it into the 50H then it's automatically act in which mode serial mode one that is a bit data i told you and one bit of start one bit of start bit one bit of stop bit totally there are 10 bits now after uh, loading the 50h to the scan register then tr1 is equal to one tr1 is nothing but one it's a timer one timer one timer one start and stop a bit tr1 bit so uh, in the bit structure of the timer, bit structure of the timer, there is a TR1. You should set the TR1, TR1 into a 1 to start the timer. If the TR1 is equal to 1, okay, it will start the timer. If TR1 is equal to 0, it will start the timer. Like that. Okay. So that TR, now you should, do, if you wanted to transmit the data serially, then you should set the TR1 is equal to what? What? TR1 is equal to 1. That's what here it's indicating. TR1 is set to 1 to start a time. Okay. After set to 1, this TR1, TA is cleared by CLR TA instruction. TA is what? Transmit interrupt flag. So TA is the second bit in the which register? S1 register. First bit is called as the RI. Receive interrupt. Second bit is called as a transmit interrupt. If DI is equal to 1, then transmission will not happen. Transmission will not start. To start the transmission, this PI should be what's called 0. Okay, you should, there is no any interrupt. Okay, that's why we should, if there is earlier, if the TI is equal to 1, now you should make it clear by using this instruction, CLR TI. CLR means if it is earlier it is 1, then it automatically removes the 1 and stores 0 in the TI position. Means there is no any interrupt for transmission. TI is nothing but what? Transmit interrupt. If it is 0, then there is no any interruption for transmission. Now the transmission will begins. Okay, please remember. So, if it is 1, then you should use this instruction CLRTI so that it clears the 1 and stores the 0. Now, the character or symbol to be transferred serially is written into the SBUF register. Okay, everything is now. Transmission is ready because we have cleared the TI flag. Transmit interrupt flag, we have cleared it. Okay, now we want original data for transmission. If there is data, only transmission happens. So that whatever the data, 8 bit of data means, each symbol or character is converted into 8 bit of data. I told you A is the one symbol or character, B is the one symbol or character, like this LO is the, it's a group of the characters or symbols. Whatever the you can give, it is converted into 8 bit data. For example, in hello, H is converted into 8 bit data, A E is converted into 8 bit data, like that. All of all symbols are converted into 8 bit data because is what? S con, S pop, all are the 8 bit registers. So that whatever the data you wanted to transmit means symbols or characters. First, load into the or store into the what? Return into the SBUF register. Because once you return into the SBUF register, it will hold it. Okay. I will tell you the which instruction is used to write the symbol or character means data into the SBUF register. Okay. After loading into the SBUF register or after storing into the SBUF register, now the TA flag bit is monitored with the use of the instruction wait colon JNB TA comma wait. See here. 
now the transmission is uh, begins you should wait the uh, what's for this ta plug earlier ta plug is what is clear zero okay until all the bits are transmitted the ta is zero only once the transmission is over the ta is again raised to one it indicates that every transmission is completed so that you can transmit the what next symbol the previous uh, transmission is completed you should start the next transmission that's what we are indicating the ta plug bit is monitor you should monitor the ta plug always whether it is zero or one until zero transmission is continuous once it become one once it become one the transmission stop it indicates that previous transmission is completed previous, previous character or symbols are what's called transmitted completely now it is ready to transmit the next symbol or characters by using this instruction in the alp we should write this instruction very jnb jnb means jump if bit is equal to zero okay bit which bit ta bit until ta bit is zero it will uh, this loop will continue jump if bit is equal to zero which bit it's a ta okay it go to the way and again again this loop is continuous next jump if bit is equal to zero yes bit is equal to zero now you can go to continue once ta bit is equal to one it will check jump if bit is equal to zero no now the bit is one because all the symbols are transmitted now the loop will not continue loop will what it is discontinued okay till the bit is equal to ta is equal to zero transmitting to the plug is this bit is equal to zero if the loop is what's called it is uh, again and again it's correcting okay once ta becomes one ta become one so it is not satisfy this condition because jump if bit is equal to zero only when the bit is equal to zero it will jump otherwise it will not jump otherwise it will loop will not continue okay once it become one okay the loop will not continue it indicates that the transmission is over okay so that by using this instruction to see if the character has been transferred completely okay so if it is one then to transfer the next character or next symbol okay then go back to the step number 5 go back to the step number 5 because once the transmission is completed ta is what set it to one now you want before transmitting the next symbol go back to the step number 5 what is there in the step number 5 ta is clear by using this ela ta instruction see okay again you should clear before transmitting the next symbol you make it as ta is equal to 0 then store the uh, next symbol in the s buffer register and start the transmission okay so again like that you should start from the step number 5 clear transfer clear transfer like this this is about the how the serial data transmission takes place in 8051 micro now in the another side how the serial data reception once the transmission is over another side external devices how they will receive the data okay the step number uh, almost similar steps where the transmission word is there just replace the transmit reception word okay see here the following steps are used to program the 8051 for serial data reception just compare the previous slides transmission slide and the reception slide almost all the same okay the t mod register is loaded with the value 20h same point again you load the t mod register with the 20h indicating that what it is acting timer 1 timer 1 in which mode mode 2 mode 2 that means a bit auto reload okay same first step is same for transmission also reception also so for what purpose we are load the 20h to the t mod register to set the baud rate four baud rates are there now which baud rate you want okay now The which will see here second step the th1 is loaded with the 8 bit appropriate value of the baud rate for serial data received same step their transmission word is there but here we see word is there that's it okay so that which will, which baud rate you want okay that baud rate is converted into 8 bit while doing the alp assembly language programming the baud rate is converted into a 8 bit so that we should load that 8 bit appropriate value of the baud rate Into the what? TH one. TH one means timer I. Timer I. Okay. It's a eight bit register also. TH one is the eight bit register. That's why load the eight bit value of the baud rate. Okay. Now the starting two steps are same. Just you should replace the transmission word by what? Reception word. Third one. The SCAN register is loaded into the value fifty H. Same. Okay. Indicating that fifty H is nothing but what? It is acting in serial mode one. Where there is a eight bit of data and one bit of start bit and one bit of stop bit. Third step is also same. Okay. Now it's a fourth step. 
TR1 is equal to 1 to torque timer. It is also same because we are dealing with the timer 1, okay, in mode 2. So that TR1 is equal to 1. If it is 1, then we start the timer. If it is 0, we stop the timer. Okay. Now, RI is clear. In the previous slide, it is a TI, transmit interrupt plug, because at the time we are dealing with transmission, but, but now it's a reception. That's why instead of TI, now here there is a small changes. RI is cleared by CLR RI. There CLR TI, now CLR RI. Before reception, if the R, just check whether RI is zero or one. If the RI is zero, no problem. Reception is happens. Okay. If the RI is one, if the RI is one, that indicates that there will be interrupt in the reception. It will not receive any data. Interrupt means disturb, stop. Okay. That's why if RI is stored with one, now we should clear this one. Clear means make it zero by using the instruction CLR RI. It clears the uh, receive interrupt flag. Clear means make it zero. Okay. There is a small changes in the fifth step where DI is there. Here it's an RI is there. Okay. Sixth one. The character or symbol to be received, then transmitted. Here it's a received. Serially is written into the SPF register. Which data you want to receive, you should write that register, in, sorry, write the data into the SPF register. Okay, the copy of the data you should write into the SPF register. Fine. Now, the RA flag bit is monitored. The day receives interrupt flag bit. That is the first bit in the SCAM register. You should monitor. Okay, because until zero, reception is continuous. Once it becomes one, reception stops. That's why you should monitor by using this instruction, wait JNB RI wait. In the previous slide, wait JNB TI. So just change RI. Okay, if jump, if jump bit is equal to zero, then loop will continue. Till RI is equal to zero, the loop will continue. Means it will zero only till all the symbols are received. Okay, successfully. Once the all the symbols are received, okay, then RA is goes to one. But the, this instruction indicate what? Jump only if bit is equal to zero. But now the bit is equal to one, so that it will not jump. So that you should always monitor that what is what happens in the this RA flag. If it is zero or one. Okay, once it becomes one, it indicates that all receive all the characters or symbols are received completely. Okay, reception success. Okay, once all the bits, all the symbols, okay, characters are received successfully. Now, if you want to receive the next symbol, then go back to the step number five. Okay, means now once all the symbols are completely received, R I is what it is set to one now. If you want to receive the next B, next symbol, now make it R I is clear. Make it R I is zero. Once it becomes zero, it is ready to receive the next symbol or it is ready to receive the next character. So that by using this instruction, JNB RIV, you should always observe the what happens in the RI flag. Okay. This is about the, the eight steps on serial data reception. Now some of the uh, simple problems. Okay. Based on the simple problems, we move on to the ALP. ALP is also very easy here. Just see one problem. Similar problems, but the only the data is changed in the uh, what's called in the question papers or it may be in the syllabus copy. Just they will change the data. That's it. Write a program. Program means ALP here to transfer a letter in A. Here we are considering only one letter or character or symbol. Same name. A serially at 9600 baud rate. They given baud rate 9600. That's why I told you in A0511 microcontroller we are always prefer 9600 baud rate. Okay, continuously for a crystal frequency, see, they are already given the standard crystal frequency of 8051 microcontroller, 11.0592 meg megahertz. Okay, so here, so they told that, they told that this is serial communication, serial communication. So that I told you in the steps, PMR should be loaded with 20H. In the problem, they are not given, so that you should consider yourself. PMR should be 20H. S can should be what? 50H. T mod should be 28 is mod. It is a timer one, timer one, act in which mode? Mode two, mode two. Okay. If they are not given in the question paper, you should consider. Okay, T mod should be 20 H. Okay. For serial communication, T mod always should be 20. And S can should be 50 H. S can should be 50 H means serial mode one, serial mode one. Okay, it's a common mode or widely used mode for serial communication where 
one bit start bit one bit stop bit one bit stop bit and eight bit of what eight bit of what data totally it's a 10 bits totally it's a 10 bits okay so the, and next one you should calculate the th1 th1 previous formula i told you no th1 256 same formula i am applying here 256 minus uh, minus crystal frequency divided by 12 into 32 quadrant okay since they are border, they are given and uh, crystal frequency they are given is the suitable formula where TH1 is equal to 256 minus this uh, crystal frequency 11.0592 mega means 10 to the power of 6 and 12 into 32 border they have given 9600. Okay, and TH1 is equal to 256. If you are calculating this value finally, you can get 3. 256 minus 3, you can get 253. 253 is nothing but what? FDH. That's why in the previous uh, slides, I showed uh, one picture, one tabular column, where 9600 is a decimal value, hexadecimal value is how much? FDH. So, finally, you got the same answer here, FDH. Okay, it is a hexadecimal value. If you remember that value, no need to calculate this much. Okay. So, next, based on this one, you should write the program. You should write the program, ALP program. Following the uh, nine steps. See here, first one, move. It may be in uppercase letter or small, lowercase letter, no problem. Move, it's a LP, move T mod with 20H. Okay, I told you know, load T mod resistor. See, loading takes place from the right hand side to left hand side. T mod resistor with immediate value of 20H. Ash means what? Immediate value. Okay, similarly, yes, can how much? 50H because it is acting in serial mode 1. So we are moving 50H. And now TH1, we are moving a baud rate. To the TH1, since it's a 8 bit, see here, TH1 is basically 8 bit. Okay, how can you move 9600 baud rate? It's a decimal value. But it's a, it's a 8 bit resistor. So that's why this decimal value you converted into what? FDH. Okay, so that's right F in 4 bits and right D in what's called 4 bits. Totally it becomes 8 bits. Now it is very easy to move to the TH1 resistor. TH1 is also 8 bit. Yeah, you can write 4 ones. You already know that. Yeah, P is nothing but what? 15. 4 ones. T is nothing but what? A is nothing but 10. B is nothing but 11. C is nothing but 12. D is nothing but 13. 13. 13 we can write like this. 2 to the power of 0, 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, 2 to the power of 3. How much you want? 13 you want. So 2 to the power of 3 is equal to 8. Still you want 5. 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 4. Still you want 1. So that 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. 8 plus 4, 12. 12 plus 1, 13. So make it 0. Make it, this one is 0. So that 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay. So 1, 1, 0, 1. This 8 bit is automatically loaded to the TH1. That's why 9600 should be converted into an 8 bit. And it is FDH. So now set to B, TR1. Now, now I am starting the time by using the set to B, TR1. So now, Whatever the data, data what they are given, A, so stored in the SBUF register, see here, again, it's a loop, move, A, the value they are given, serial data they are given, it's a A, move to the which register, SBUF register, it will hold, and after that one, see here, wait for the TI is equal to, monitor the TI, same instructions here, wait, JNB, TI, wait, I told you the previous, you should monitor this TI. Okay, earlier you were cleared this TI so that transmission of the A happens in terms of bit by bit. A is also converted into A, A is also converted into 8 bit of data. 8 bit, it automatically converts A into 8 bit of data so that this, uh, this data is transmitted bit by bit. First bit, second bit, third bit, fourth bit, like that. Once uh, until the 8 bits are transmitted, TI is equal to 0. That's what it's waiting. That's what it's waiting. Once all the 8 bits are completed, once all the 8 bits are completed, TI becomes 1. So that what happens in the next step? Clear TI. Because there is a next uh, transmission should be happen. Okay. That's why once TI becomes 1, clear TI. Make it again 0. So SJ, short jump, again. Again means it goes to here. Then move the new data. Move SBUF in the place of the new data. It may be a VEC or it may be hello. Okay, it's a group of characters or symbol, so that this loop will continue until TI becomes 1. Okay, so once TI becomes 1, clear, again, you can send the new data. Okay, like this, you can write the ALP for the serial data transmission. This is the problem for serial data transmission. Now, last problem related to serial data reception. 
in the previous problem, transmission is over. How the reception takes place? So, one sample problem is there. Write an ELP assembly language program to receive serial data reception continuously at a board rate, board rate, same board rate. Okay, that's why please remember 9600 hexadecimal value FDH. No need to calculate all those calculations if you remember. 8 bit data and one stop bit for a crystal frequency, same 11.0.92, it is a standard in 8051 microcontroller. And place it in the RAM, random access memory with a memory location. They give on the address of the memory location 62H. And also send it uh, after storing in the memory location, send it to a port number P. There are four ports in the microcontroller P1, sorry, P0, P1, P2, P3, so that you can easily send it to P. So, same procedure here, move P mod, how much value? 20H, because it should be work in timer 1 and mode 2. If you move 20H into the P mod register and move 50H, here the, I'm just interchanging the steps. You can write this one in the second time, no problem, okay? Move S mod register with 50H, means serial mode 1, where 8 bit. One bit start bit, one bit stop bit. After that one, see here, FDH. Here in this, I am not calculating the 9600 baud rate. I am not converting again into FDH. Because, okay, it's already in the previous problem you are calculated, 9600 is converted into FDH. So that move that FDH means baud rate, 9600. Same value here, 9600. Okay, into which register? TH1 register. Timer I, you say 8 bit register. Okay, now set the timer, TR1. TR1 means start the timer. Okay, now again here RI so that if the RI is equal to 0, then only it will receive the data. That's why if it is 0 or 1, better, better to use this instruction. If you use this instruction, then RI is 0, again it is converted into 0. If it is 1, again it is converted into 0. So that better to use this instruction, uh, otherwise the program is struck in the year itself, if it is 1 earlier. Okay, so that again clear RI, clear RI, make it 0. Now, whatever the data, okay, it want to receive, it start from this instruction. Wait, JNB, RI, wait. So jump, if bit is equal to 0, Till RI is equal to 0, it will receive the data. It will receive the data. Whatever transmitted from the, the transmission the transmitter side, the same data it is received till the RI is equal to 0. That's why jump if bit is equal to 0. JM is jump if bit is equal to 0. Wait. Okay, if it is 0, goes to the way again this two. Wait, go to the again this two. Okay. So once the reception is completed, once the reception is completed, this RI becomes 1. RI becomes so. Okay, after that one, whatever the data received that is stored where is stopped temporarily. Okay, serial buffer. Whatever the data received is stored in the serial buffer. So this data is moved to the accumulator. Accumulator is commonly used register to store the result. Okay, here the result is what? Result is the received data. Okay, so that the data is initially stored in the S buff. Okay, in the problem they given, you should see. Uh, send the received data to the memory location after memory location to the port P2. Okay, that's why whatever the data received is stored in the S1 and again it is moved to the accumulator. Accumulator. So that from the accumulator, see here, from the accumulator, N is accumulator, I move to a memory location. What is the memory location here? 62H. In the problem they are given, 62H memory location, RAM memory location. From S to the accumulator, from accumulator to the 62H, that is the memory location. Now, finally, according to the problem, from the memory location, we move to the port number P2. See here, from the memory location means, see here, from the accumulator to the memory location, no. So, in the accumulator, still the copy of the data is present. Accumulator, it not completely send the data. It will send the, the copy of the data to the memory location. Still, original data is there in the accumulator. Okay, see here, accumulated to the memory location, copy of the data, duplicate data. Okay, but still original value is there in the accumulator. So that from that original, uh, from that accumulator, you can send it to the port 2. According to the uh, problem, according to the given statement, we should send it to the memory location also. That is the 62H memory location, is the address of the memory location in the RAM, and also to the port number P2. Accumulator, it not completely transmit the data, it will uh, transmit the copy of the data. Still the original data is resides or remaining in the accumulator. So finally from the accumulator, I am sending it to the one port number P2. Finally, if you want to transmit a new data, then SJMP again, again means what? 
clear ri once the transmission is over ri is what raised to 1 or set to 1 now clear ri make it zero and here what's called new data will be received new data will be received and stored in the s pop accumulator and to the memory location and finally to the which port you want we can uh, receive through that port okay now this is about the one problem related to the how the data is received through serial port and finally these are the some of the question banks uh, you can see these questions in the uh, syllabus copy itself at the end of the syllabus copy you can get these sample questions okay sample questions uh, almost all the questions are theoretical questions few questions based on the problems okay for this are the five marks questions five marks question almost i completed all in the um, uh, previous three classes plus this class and in the next slide there will be 10 marks questions here majority you should concentrate towards the, uh, the uh, bit structure of the t mod register t con register s con register okay and these are the some of the problems related to this uh, baud rate bit rate this completes your 50 unit that means uh, timers counters and uh, io ports almost all according to syllabus all the contents are completed if you have any doubt you can ask me